fist the dagger. G'day guys, JB here coming at you with yet another Legends Profile video. As I mentioned in my previous video with LaMarcus Aldridge, I'm trying to get a few of these uh, out, previewed uh, and ready to go just to try and keep some content on the channel and just give me a little bit of space so I'm able to create and update my top 50 all-time players list in the NBA. Um, so we have yet another video coming to you now and I've been wanting to go through decade by decade period by period as far as uh, picking players as far as those who have impacted the game and I thought why not go right back let's go and have a look at the very very start of the league we're talking pre shot clock uh, we're talking the era of set shots and underhanded baskets we're talking the founding fathers and the founding years of the National Basketball Association. So I decided to wind it right back and go back to the very first leader and first star of the National Basketball Association or the Basketball Association of America as it was known and wind it right back to the legendary Jumpin' Joe Fulks. Fulks the first real star, quote unquote, in the history of the league, a genuine scoring threat. Uh, and a guy who very much was not afraid to take a shot during his time as a player. Uh, unfortunately, isn't around anymore. But nonetheless, uh, Fultz certainly met uh, an untimely demise, shall we say. Um, he really is a legend of the sport, a founding father, if you will. Of course, we have covered Dennis Johnson, Kevin McHale, Dennis Rodman, Ben Wallace, Dwight Howard, Paul Arizon, Sam Jones, Nate Thurmond. Bobby Dandridge, Bobby Jones, Sidney Moncrief, Joe Dumas, uh, Jason Kidd, and LaMarcus Aldridge. But this week, we take our focus all the way back to the founding days of the league. Let's take a look back at the legend that is Jumpin' Joe Fawkes. The first ever star of the BAA days of the NBA, let's reflect on the contributions of the late Joe Fawkes, who's a one-time BAA champion, a three-time BAA first-team selection, a one-time BAA second-team selection, a two-time NBA All-Star selection, and a one-time scoring champion. Now, it should be noted that no individual awards were presented during the time of Fulks' career. In the regular season, he played 489 games, averaging 23.4 minutes per game based on available data. He averaged 16.4 points, 5.3 rebounds, and 1.2 assists, shot 30.2% from the field and 76.6% from the free throw line. In the playoffs, he played 31 games, averaging 23.3 minutes per game based on available data. He averaged 19 points, 5.6 rebounds, 0.4 assists on 25.8% shooting from the field and 78.2% from the free throw line. When the history of the NBA is discussed in the year 2024, you can understand that people feel that league history only dates back for the last 25 years. Some still see the 1980s as the start of the league, while others consider the merging of the NBA and the ABA. But what needs to be taken into account is the founding years of the world's biggest professional league. The NBA celebrates its history with the start of the 1946-47 Basketball Association of America season. With that in mind, you can't go past the league's first star scorer and the first man to ever lead a recognised championship team, Joe Fulks. Error for error, Fulks is as bulk of a scorer that has ever played happily taking every shot given to him in an era that transformed from underhand and set shots to the jump shots that we take for granted in the modern game. And while the efficiency rate from the field appears to have aged like milk, the importance of context as well as respect for the foundations that have been laid for the game today need to be paid. Speaking of context, let's provide some of it. Of Fulks's three seasons scoring at least 20 points a game, his field goal percentage peaked out at 31.3%. In his peak season of 1948-49, the league average was 32.7% from the field. That's a difference of 1.4 points in favour of the league, or 4.3% under league average. To compare that in 2023-24, players to average 20 a game who were 1.4 points or more below the league average include Steph Curry, Tyrese Maxey, Trey Young, Damian Lillard and Lamelo Ball. 
if we focus on players that were 4.3% under league average, whilst also averaging 20 points a game, you can include the previously mentioned players, along with Cade Cunningham, Anthony Simons, Jarrett Jackson Jr., Cam Thomas, and Jeremy Grant. Across his three seasons, scoring at least 20 points a game, his field goal average was 29.5%. By comparison, the league average was 29.9%, seeing a difference of 0.4 points in favour of the league, or 1.3% under league average. From 2021-22 to 2023-24, players to average 20 points a game who shot 46.4% or less, both 1.3% and 0.4% under the league average for that time period, include Jason Tatum, Paul George, Anthony Edwards, Julius Randle, and Deontay Murray. Keeping in mind the context of shooting from the field, the time period the game was played, the infant stage of the sport, as well as things such as equipment and training, you would think that the perceived inefficiency would translate to the free throw line. Using those same three seasons, let's take a look at the charity stripe conversion for Fulks. Peak season of 78.7% .7 from the line saw him 8.4 points above league average or 11.9% better. 78.7% .7 alone from the line without any context in 2023-24 would be better than the likes of Luka Doncic, Giannis Antetokounmpo, De'Aaron Fox, LeBron James and Jalen Brown. Now, 8.4 points above average whilst averaging 20 points in 2023-24 would be as good or better than Jalen Brunson, Kevin Durant, Nikola Jokic, Anthony Davis, and DeMar DeRozan. And if he was 11.9% better than league average in 2023-24, his free throw line conversion would surpass Shea Gilgis-Alexander, Zion Williamson, Kyle Kuzma, Carl Anthony Towns, and Pascal Siakam. For more context, Fulks shot 76% from the line 8.3 points or 12.3% above average through his peak three seasons. That would be better than the likes of Donovan Mitchell, Jimmy Butler, Kristaps Porzingis, Zach Levine, and Joel Embiid through 21-22 to 23-24 if 8.3 points above average, or better than Devin Booker, Darius Garland, Jamal Murray, Terry Rozier, and Brandon Ingram if 12.3% above league average. While these are merely numbers and completely hypothetical almost 80 years after the fact, it creates context to just how good of a player Fuchs was in his era. For mine, there is no doubt that Fuchs would have been a league MVP and a finals MVP had they existed in his time, such was his impact on the game. Outside of George Mikan, Fuchs was the clear-cut best player of the pre-shot clock period of the game. From 1946-47 to 1953-54, Fulks ranked second in points, shots made, and games played. As far as records, Fulks set the single game scoring mark four times, along the way becoming the first player in history to score 60 points in a game. This record would stand for a decade before Lakers legend Elgin Baylor claimed the mantle. As far as a green light is concerned for a player, only Wilt Chamberlain can lay claim to having been told to shoot the ball more freely since. There have been 20 occasions where a player has taken at least 50 field goal attempts in a game in NBA history. The only three times this occurred before the shot clock was adopted were by Fulks. All three resulted in wins for his Warriors team. The other instances in history were one each to Elgin Baylor, Rick Barry and Kobe Bryant. And the other 14, Wilt Chamberlain, of course. The first recognised championship in NBA history was won by the Philadelphia Warriors. With Fulks as their leader, he more than shouldered his share of the load. As a team, Philadelphia finished second in the East with the fifth best offensive game in the league. Averaging 68.8 points, they would have only one player averaging 20 points a game. Hell, they had just one player averaging double digits. That player was Joe Fulks. Averaging 23.3 points, Fulks would also be crowned the NBA's inaugural scoring champion. However, this was due to his total points of 1,389, as the league did not start awarding the scoring title on a per-game basis until the 1969-70 season. Fulks would also be rewarded with selection to the league's first all-league first team, alongside fellow founding fathers Max Zaslowski, Stan Myasek, Bones McKinney and Bob Fierick. Philadelphia had to play in all three rounds of the playoffs this season, compared to their finals opponents the Chicago Stags, led by Zaslowski, who automatically advanced to the second round. 
round one saw the Warriors defeat the St. Louis Bombers of Belus Smalley 2-1, with Falks closing the series out with a game-high 24 points. The second round saw Philadelphia advance past the New York Knicks and Bud Palmer as Falks led all scorers of the inaugural league finals saw a 4-1 win to the Warriors over the Stags. Falks averaged 26.2 points for their series and closed out the clinching game with 34 points. The BAA and soon to be NBA was off and running, and Fulks was the face of the league. While the path taken was certainly not the smoothest, and threatened to fail for the better part of its first decade, the team spoiling by the wayside, Jump and Joe proved to be a mainstay that saw the league through rough waters through to the now famed first dynasty of history with the Lakers of George Mikan, and the first ever All-Star game to the final season of the league before the advent of the shot clock. In this time, Fuchs would find himself matched up with or against legends such as those previously mentioned, the likes of Connie Simmons, Fred Scolari, Cleggy Hermsen, the originator of the jump shot, Kenny Sailors, Bob Cousy, George Mikan, Dolph Shays, Carl Braun, Andy Phillip, Harry Gallatin, Arnie Risen, Bobby Wanza, Jim Pollard, Slater Martin, Dick Maguire, Vern Mickelson, Ed McCauley, Alex Hannum, Fred Schultz, Al Servi, Larry Faust, Paul Arison, Bill Sharman, Earl Lloyd, Nat Clifton, Chuck Cooper, Don Barksdale, Mel Hutchins, Neil Johnston, Gene Connolly, Clyde Lavellop, Ray Felix, and George Yardley. These names may just be a list for some, but for the foundations of the game, they are all a part of the blueprint of the sport we see today. No matter your opinions on the evolution of the sport, they would not be possible without them. And for those who marvel at the offensive end of the game, full respect should be paid to Joe Fulks and his contributions to it. Fulks was selected as a member of the NBA's 25th anniversary team, was inducted to the Naismith Basketball Hall of Fame in 1978, and at some stage should rightfully have his number 10 retired in honour of his founding contributions by the Golden State Warriors.